Mason Paris won the Hodge Trophy. Now, let's take a little bit closer look at this. One thing about the Hodge that bothers me is that there's a criteria. I mean, I, I just got to tell you that be, because I have a fear with the criteria. I lived through the 90s. I lived through the BCS. It was a poll. It was a computer that would tell us who the national champion was in football. I mean, this, this is scumbaggery to the highest of level, which only the NCAA could do, which is the scum of the earth. Truly. I mean, th this is terrible. A computer was declaring champion, and then those people actually felt like champions. They would hold parades. There's guys from that time from that, that wear rings now and want to tell people about the good old day when they were the national champion. No game, no playoff, no battle. Very interesting thing. So when the Hodge has a criteria, that, that bothers me. How are we going to do this? Because no matter what you put on your criteria, pins and tech balls and major decisions, no, no matter how you think you've covered it, nothing trumps who beat who. Nothing trumps strength of schedule. Now, here's the good news. There's a criteria, but it's not done by a computer, which means human beings can step in and do what I just said. Which is just, I don't care how many this guy pinned. This guy did it against top ranked opponents. It's a, it's a really big deal. And if you look at today's heavyweights, you could do Hendricks, you'd have to throw him in there. Air Force kid, set that building on fire. Standing ovations. Every time he wrestled, he got a standing ovation just out of respect to the commitment he's made to our country while pursuing. His sport, Kirk Levick, has world medals, right? World medals. Schultz, if the Olympics were today, would be our country's representative. And then you have Mason Paris, the king of them all. 33-0. Not only a national champion, a world champion. And he had to go through them all. Take the names that I just said. Go back over history. Go put a whole bunch of calendars. Ever since the NCAA has been keeping track of this thing, put them on the wall, take a dart and throw it. Whenever you hit, any of those names I just said would have been national champion. In any any time in any era, and of course there would be exceptions, right? You're like uh, Kerry McCoy, uh, Kurt Angle, uh, Stephen Neal. Th there, of course, was exceptions where we had these really great, uh, Tara Kay might be an example, these really great heavyweights. I, I'm doing it more in a broad stroke, and I'm just suggesting for you Heavyweight is never the deepest class. It was never the most competitive. Oh boy, it was now. It was unbelievable. Just the looks of these heavy. What about the Northwestern kid? Northwestern kid was frightening looking. He came in like number sixth. Trent went out and put a good tournament together. I predicted that, by the way. I predicted that for Hilger. Now, here's what I want to share with you, though. Okay. It wasn't just the depth and it wasn't just who he beat. There was a courage. And this part is missed. Nobody's written about this. Christian Pyle didn't write about this. And I'm wondering if people have missed it. I guarantee you those who weighed their opinion and had to decide if you're going to put Mason over Yanni, over Carter, over Vito, if you're going to do that, how and why are you going to do it? And I'll guarantee that they will back me when I tell you Courage was factored into that. Of everything that Mason did, 33 and 0. Wow, that's really impressive. Come through the front side, get back to the tournaments. Everything's on the line. Spot that he's been in before and failed, and he's got to go through Kirklevic to do it, who he knows inside and out and just saw two weeks ago. I mean, talk about a demotivation. He goes out and gets it done, gets his hand raised, does it in front of the former president of the United States. It was a big deal. It wasn't as big of a deal as what he set out to do. And it wasn't as big of a deal what he was prepared to do. And it wasn't as big of a deal as what he thought he was going to have to do, which was go through the Olympic champion. That is the difference. Those heavyweights that step forward, and we will give Mason the credit since he came out on top. All those heavyweights, but I'm talking about Mason right now, was willing and prepared and thought he was going to have to go through Gable. And he stepped to the plate anyway. He dug deep. He worked in the offseason. He prepared. He game planned. He did not back down. 
That's the difference. If you want to know how they came to Mason over the other great options, just so you know, it wasn't Gomez sliding a win in over Yanni, just so you understand. It wasn't Carter being overlooked because of some promo that he cut, which he does very well. It wasn't Vito being overlooked and we gave him the O-dub and that's enough to feed him and keep him quiet. It was none of those things. It was what Mason was prepared to do, what he thought he was going to have to do. And what he was willing to walk out there and prove, including against the Olympic champion. 